Hi, and welcome back to the giant world of tiny things and probably our weirdest episode yet. Let's be honest. And actually the answer is no, I have not gone crazy. I might have had an energy drink too many, but that doesn't change the fact that this video is going to be really useful for all of you macro photographers out there. So hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Because in this video I'm going to share five brilliant but also simple macro hacks that will make your life easier and help you step up your macro photography instantly. So let's jump right into it. Tip number one, use helping hands when you're staging creative macro shots in the studio. And no, I'm not implying to hire an assistant. The solution that I'm suggesting here is much more cost effective and much easier than that. I'm suggesting that you get a soldering station like the one you're seeing on screen right now or even better a soldering station like this. Now this is a third hand tool but in truth this is a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth hand tool because instead of the classic version with those two alligator clips and a magnifying glass this version here has six additional alligator clips that is more than enough to hold your creative subjects, your backdrop, your light or whatever you want to attach to this tool in place while you're just worrying about your creativity and snapping the shots that you're after. Now the ones of you who are following me on social media probably know this tool already because I frequently post behind the scenes images and I almost never post behind the scenes images that don't include this tool and honestly without this tool I couldn't do the macro photography and the creative work that I'm doing. Um, yeah I'm going to include a few images right now that I took with the aid of this tool and if you want to take images like this hell yeah get one of these tools because it's simply brilliant they're fairly cost effective I think it's 25 to 35 bucks depending on where you buy it and which version you get so yeah get one of those let's move on to tip number two and this one is pretty self-explanatory you can use a sponge or a mister in order to simulate rain or haze or dew drops in your macro images and all of these options are a lot of fun to play around with and explore creatively now as I said this pretty much explains itself but there are a couple things worth noting. Now obviously the sponge is the choice that you would use to create actual rain as it creates really heavy drops and for best results I recommend using the high speed continuous mode of your camera and squeezing the sponge out while you're moving it across the frame and then you can stitch the single frames together in Adobe Photoshop in post processing and just paint in those bits where you actually capture the raindrops to make the image overall looking like a rainy day and it's also fun to just play around with different exposure types and to even use a continuous light source such as a flashlight to create light rays with those slowly falling raindrops when you're using longer exposure times such as I did in the initial image in the opening sequence of this video. Now with the mister you can do quite different things. You can create dew drops for example on really small subjects such as dandelion seeds or on glass or you can just imitate and simulate an early morning in the field if you're photographing a flower inside for example by spraying it with some fine mist and then photographing it. Alternatively you can obviously just spray it in front or in behind your subject and shoot a flash at it to create some bokeh bubbles or at least some specular highlights. Now that's pretty much it for this hack already. Let's talk about hack number three and this one really was an auto include for this video because it's so brilliant, so powerful and it's so cheap and easy to make and use. If you haven't guessed it yet, I'm obviously talking about the famous Pringles can macro light diffuser which can look like this but doesn't have to. Obviously you can build your own version depending on your own preference, your style of shooting and your own subject matter but I found this specific build very useful as it's really super flexible, has a wide range of working distance and can be adjusted in a lot of different ways. So if you're interested in how I built this check the description below for an in-depth tutorial on how to make this but for now let's just stick to the basic elbow piece which is going to step up your macro game already if you're not using one like this already. And what it does for you is that it modifies and redirects the light emitted by your on-camera speed light which will typically blow right past your subject to exactly where you need it coming from right above and shining its diffused light onto your subject imitating a nice sunny day outside and making sure that you're not getting any harsh shadows anywhere on your subject. This is really brilliant and you can build it on a budget of five or six bucks and it comes with a free snack. 
All you need for this is a can of Pringles, some duct tape, you're going to need a cutting knife and some sort of diffusion layer which can be anything that is white and semi-translucent. You could use some thin fabric, some drawer lining, you could use parchment paper, you could even use an old sock if that's all you have. It doesn't really matter, all that matters is that it diffuses the light. And now I'm just going to show you a few images that I took with this diffuser and I'm going to show you a few different builds that are possible so you can get some ideas and maybe get inspired to build your own and then we're going to move on to hack number four. number four really isn't as much of a hack as it actually is a piece of advice from one macro photographer to another. I think we photographers can all agree on the creative potential that taking your speed light off camera holds in pretty much any photographic genre there is, but especially in macro photography. And yet I see very, very few creative macro shots that actually take advantage of this potential and really utilize it. So in this part of the video, I'd just like to remind and encourage all of you to be more experimental with your lighting and take the speed light off camera more often. And I know it is really, really tempting to just keep it on camera all day and slap on a diffuser and just run and gun. And it has a bit of that treasure hunt vibe, right? You're just chasing after your subjects and whenever you nail focus, you're pretty much guaranteed a great shot because the lighting is great and it really makes for a lot of fun and for really good images. But in most cases, it does not make for outstanding images because outstanding images are created when you really think about the individual factors that make and break an image and light is one of the most important key parts of pretty much any photo. So yeah, think more about the lighting, explore your subject, really think about its specific three-dimensional shape and the features that make it unique and then ask yourself how can I embrace and enhance these features using my lighting. For example, let's say you're photographing an ant with some really fine hair on its abdomen. Now I think a rim light, a backlight shining from a 45 degree angle down on that ant is going to look really nice. Let's say you're photographing a snail in the evening. Now I think it would look really cool to have the light right behind the snail with a large diffuser or a little bit of a softbox that creates a silhouette and really exaggerates that or emphasizes the shape of that snail with its little eyes extending and its nice little shell. I think you can envision the image I'm talking about. I don't have such an image, but I'll do my best to create one in the upcoming summer season. Yet I think you know what I mean and I think you can follow along and I think you understand the importance and the benefit that comes with taking your speed light off camera and just spanning a little bit of thought on how you can use your light to really enhance your subject. Hack number five use flashlights. And this might sound odd at first, but in my opinion, flashlights are one of the most overlooked and underrated items you could potentially add to your macro kit, as they are super useful, incredibly versatile, and so lightweight you won't even notice them in your camera bag until you actually need one, and then you're gonna be glad to have it. I particularly enjoy them as focusing aids in the field, because they are so, so useful for this very purpose, especially headlights like this can be incredibly useful because they keep your hands free as you're holding your subject and you're shining the light on it and you're focusing on it and all this with just two hands and it doesn't restrict you in any way. It's just plain, simply brilliant. Now this is especially useful in the early morning hours in the field, which by the way is the best time to photograph insects as they are still sleepy and kind of cold and slow paced. And especially if you're using a vintage lens or a manual macro lens that requires you to stop down the aperture before you actually press the shutter button, this really limits the amount of light that you have to focus with. And these are scenarios where a focusing aid can be incredibly useful. But even though they make for brilliant focusing aids in the field, this is by far not the only way to take advantage of flashlights in your macro photography. I also enjoy using them as a secondary light source in many of my images either for fill light to really brighten up the areas that don't receive a lot of exposure by my primary light source or to accentuate and highlight certain parts of the scene that I'm photographing. For example, when I'm photographing mushrooms and you really want to light paint under the cap of the mushroom, you're going to need a flashlight for that. Or when you're photographing refraction shots and you've got a photo as a backdrop, shining a flashlight onto the backdrop really makes that refracted image in your spherical subject in the foreground pop and stand out much more than if you were to photograph it without a flashlight. 
And apart from using it as an additional light source or a focusing aid, you can also incorporate flashlights actively into your photography by making them a part of the landscape or the composition that you're photographing. And this works especially well if you find a way to attach colored gels to your flashlight. As you can see, I used some black duct tape to attach a stab ring to the front of this flashlight, which now provides the filter thread necessary for me to attach some vintage color filters and that now allows me to tint the light in any color that I'd like to. Usually I go for warm shades because that allows me to either imitate a harvest moon or a rising sun or I just have it off to the side on a low angle and imitate the early morning sunlight that is really nice and orange and vibrant and this is just such a useful tool to have in your creative tool bag. So I encourage all of you to use flashlights and if you can find a way use them with gels because it's so much fun to use these creatively in your macro shoots. Now there's just one more thing that I'd like to quickly point out before we wrap this video up and that is the fact that all the flashlights that I've been using in today's video are actual bike lights and I decided on bike lights for a number of reasons beginning with the fact that they are weather sealed which is just really nice for your own peace of mind to know that you can use them out in the rain or in the studio while you're simulating rain with this trick that I've shown you you can get them wet it doesn't matter because they are weather sealed but honestly that's just the cherry on top of the cake the main reason is that they are super bright in most cases very reliable and they come with a battery that is usually very strong and very durable and last but not least they come with a mounting system that is designed to fit on the handlebar of your bike and therefore also fits on the center column of pretty much any tripod out there and just how sweet is it to have a mount for a weather sealed flashlight right on your tripod it's very sweet if you ask me and that's it for this video those are my five macro hacks to improve your photography and if you enjoyed the content please leave me a thumbs up I really appreciate it and if you're walking away with a bit of fresh inspiration and if you'd like more of that hit the bell notification down below and subscribe to this channel to make sure you get notified when my next video comes out and that usually is every Friday I'm looking forward to seeing you there I'm gonna crack another bottle and get started with the next video I see you next time until then stay creative keep shooting and have a good time bye